All right, I've had the M4 MacBook Air base model for a week now. And the question is, can it replace my M2 MacBook Pro from a few years ago? Short answer, any guesses? Yes, yes it can, but we need to get into it a little bit. So that's what we're gonna do today. Before we do though, on this channel, we talk about tech that marries form and function. We like tech that both improves our lives and also looks good while doing it. So if that sounds cool to you, please consider subscribing and like this video for more. So I've been using the M4 MacBook Air base model for a full week now, sidelining my M2 MacBook Pro. I literally closed it, put it away once I got this guy set up, and I've been just using this for a solid week by itself, editing videos, doing the day-to-day -day nine to five stuff, email, just the normal browsing, all that kind of stuff. Basically going through my normal week of work just using this. Now, to give some perspective, I am a digital advertiser and marketer for my nine to five job. The YouTube stuff is something I do on the side, though I do end up editing quite heavily, but I also have editors here around the channel that help me edit. And I will say that editing is probably the biggest, most intensive thing I do to my computers. So already right there, that probably shows you why something like this might be good enough, but we'll dive into a little bit more. I'd say one of the biggest things I do with any of the computers or laptops that I own is I most probably 90% of the time I'm hooked up to an external monitor just so I have more real estate for my nine to five job. The dashboards and stuff that I log into and use daily for programmatic advertising are much better on a bigger screen. So most of the time you'll find I have my laptop docked and I had zero issues with this setup at my desk using the Apple Studio Display. It was nice and snappy, easy to use, and with this new model, you can have up to two 6K external displays, which I don't know why you would. If you're the type of person that's buying a base model computer for massive displays, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but hey, it might make a lot of sense to you. It is good to know, however, that I could have two external displays if I wanted to, and if they're 4K, it should be no problem. As I mentioned, I bumbled around in uh, Final Cut editing a 4K video, and it was quick, it was snappy, it didn't stutter at all. Very similar experience. In fact, it might even be a little bit faster than the M2 MacBook Pro here, which was very interesting. And maybe not faster, but I don't know, more fluid, if that makes sense. Let's talk about power and performance though. Now, if you've been around on the channel for a while, you know I don't love diving into specs and stuff here. I just like the experience of using products. Do they work? Don't they? Do they stutter? Are they smooth? That's what I'm more about here on the channel. But I do think because of the comparison here, it is worth mentioning. This new M4 MacBook Air comes with a 10 core CPU and an eight core GPU, whereas the M2 MacBook Pro has a 10 core CPU and 10 core GPU. So it is a little bit lacking there. However, I feel like the M4 chip kind of makes up for some of that, at least in the day-to-day -day stuff that I'm doing. Now, the 15-inch model of the new MacBook Air, actually base model, comes with 10-core CPU and GPU. So that's something to consider. And when you think about, this was around $2,000, I think, when I got it, 1999 or something like that, compared to this, which is under $1,000. At least for what I'm doing, this makes a ton of sense. I bought this model wanting to future-proof myself, but it's crazy. It's insane, actually, just how powerful Apple's, like, lowest tier model computer is these days. Now, in last week's video, I talked about this blue color and you can see it is blue and it's a very nice blue color. And I would even say in most lighting, it looks black. The biggest things are the fingerprint smudges, which you can already see here just from normal use. And honestly, I wouldn't mind the fingerprint smudges if this was like black or a super dark gray, but the fact that it has that blue tinge, we're gonna get into really nitty picky stuff here aesthetic wise, but being a con Content creator, I care about like the aesthetic of my desk setup and my office and blah, blah, blah. I also just love good design and that kind of stuff. Most of my tech and normal products are monochrome, black, white, silver. And if I want pops of color, it's usually green, like plants, things like that. Or if there's a piece of tech that's just like screaming a pop of color for a certain reason, that makes a lot of sense to me. So this blue doesn't really fit with anything else in my setup. And yes, it could be a pop of color, but it's such a staple of every day that I think I regret buying the blue. And in fact, I decided actually I'm going to send this back in for the silver model. And on last week's video, somebody commented, why didn't you get the 15 inch? And I think I've always wanted smaller, more portable when it comes to MacBooks. If I have a, a big desk setup, then when it comes to what I'm taking with me on the go, I want it to be small and light. 
However, it got me thinking because nowadays I am almost always plugging into an external monitor unless I'm out and about. I do like a bigger screen. And because the MacBook Air is so light, this is 2.7 pounds, this is three pounds. The MacBook Air 15 inch is actually only 3.3 pounds. So actually, I bought the base model MacBook Air 15 in silver, I'm gonna be sending this back. And because of that, I'll get the 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU. So basically in every way, except for storage, this is 512 and the 15 inch is 256, not a problem. And I'll get to that here in a second. The new MacBook Air that I'm gonna be getting is better than this MacBook Pro here in terms of power. And it's a little bit heavier, so I guess you could go that route. That said, there's a couple tiny little things that you might notice, things that I noticed. The first is the webcam doesn't seem to be as good as this. I actually haven't looked into the specs of this webcam. This has stage manager, which might have a big part to do with it. It's like constantly zoomed might be a factor there, but it's 12 megapixel and I've just noticed it's not as clear. Again, for me, I'm usually on my Mac Studio display, so I'm using that webcam, which is fine, but not a huge issue for me. Also, of course, the screen. It's not as good as the MacBook Pro here, lower brightness and no mini LED, but honestly, after a week, I barely noticed the difference and I have found I'm usually not outside on my computer. 500 nits of brightness is totally fine. And even indoors, I can't really tell a difference. The final thing is this model has slightly thicker bezels than the Pro model does, much like the iPad lineup. However, I keep saying I'm gonna make a video on it. Bezels don't matter, they don't. And you can fight me on that, but I'll make a video on that in the future, I would like to. It's been a long time coming. These be bezels are thicker than these, but again, after a week of usage, it doesn't matter to me anymore. And until I go back and use this, I don't notice it. So that's neither here nor there. The final thing I'll mention, so bonus, just for those of you who are subscribed and are sticking around, I actually ended up also buying the new M4 Mac Mini. And the reason I did was because they just put them out on Apple's refurbished site. So you can get them for even cheaper than they already are. And I actually beefed mine up a little bit, which I almost never do. I always go base model, but I got the 24 gigabytes of RAM, I think 12 gigabytes CPU, 16 gigabyte GPU, which I honestly didn't even really know or care that I was getting. I just wanted to up the RAM and the model that they had there included that beefiness to it. So I wanna take a quick aside here and say, base model, lowest priced Mac, iPhone 16e, lowest priced phone, Mac mini, lowest priced Apple desktop, incredible power and incredible value. They lowered the price of this. The, Apple's doing something really special here, which they've always been premium, they still are, but their base model lineup is so impressive right now. And I, I think it's hitting a lot of people, whether they know it or not. I think for a lot of tech YouTubers, we're not really realizing it because we're just like, oh, they raised the price of the base model of the iPhone. But like the amount of power that Apple is feeding out to a lower price point is incredible. Just as an aside, something to think about. So again, can the M4 MacBook Air replace the M2 MacBook Pro? I think for 99% of users it can, especially if you're in a similar field as I am. Even if you're doing like day-to-day -day video editing work, this is gonna be able to handle 99% of what you're doing. At least anything, any video you've watched on this channel can be handled by this, if that makes sense. Now, if you are planning to have a nice desk set up with an external monitor, I can't recommend enough having a dock for that. And Ivanki is a company I've worked with on the channel before. I'm gonna leave a link down to the dock that I've been using from them in the description down below. It's fantastic. It's got SD card, plenty of slots. You can leave like a SSD plugged into it, which gives you the added storage here, which is why storage really isn't an issue for me when it comes to laptops, because I usually plug in when I'm doing that heavy editing work into a dock, which has an SSD. Ivanki's great. Their products work really well. I can't recommend them enough. So I'll leave a link in the description down below. I'm not paid to say that. I just really like them. So that's it. What are your thoughts? Could this M4 MacBook Air replace your M2 MacBook Pro, M1 MacBook Pro, M3 MacBook Pro? In my opinion, probably, but let me know in the comments what you think. Stick around, I'm gonna be doing a little review of some sort or some kind of video on the M4 Mac Mini. It literally came in today and I just finished setting it up and I'm pretty excited. I, for one, am excited for what Apple is doing right now. I think a lot of people aren't excited for what Apple's doing because they're playing it safe and just releasing kind of normal products, but they're like so beefed up. So much so that when it gets to a cycle, if Apple starts to innovate again and actually make some interesting new hardware, interesting new designs, the power is gonna be there. But 
I digress. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Like this video for more. Watch this video next. I think you're going to love it. And I'll see you all in the next one.